Wireshark is a powerful Wi-Fi sniffing tool that's even able to intercept images out of thin air. Today, we'll show you how to intercept images from insecure Wi-Fi security cameras on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Most people watching security cameras rely on the usually insecure HTTP web server that's running on the camera in order to watch the security feed or change settings on the camera. Now, this is commonly HTTP rather than HTTPS, and most people don't really bother to make the distinction or prefer to buy one that's secure because they don't understand the risk that it poses. Now, on a security uh, on a network that has security, like a WPA network that has passwords, if you just have one person on the network, you're probably going to be okay if you have a pretty strong password and nobody can see the traffic that's going through it. But the second somebody else gets your password, or if it's on an open or shared network, then you can really start to get in trouble because anybody can see these insecure HTTP requests over the network. Now what this boils down to is we can actually see what the person is seeing on their screen. So if they're watching the security camera, or as is common, they have a dedicated monitor set up to watch it somewhere in their business or home, then we can literally just download the packets as they're transferring from one device to another, and then use Wireshark to export them and look at them on our screen. So to do this, we'll need to have the password to the network so we can decrypt the traffic that's flowing. And we'll also need to initially kick them off the network for a moment so we can capture the per transaction session information that allows us to see everything in this particular uh, Wi-Fi connection. Because if we were to intercept this without getting that four-way handshake, then we wouldn't actually be able to see the packets that are flowing over the wire. We just kind of see that it was data, but not exactly what was contained. Once we have a handshake and we also have the password of the network, we should be able to use Wireshark and a wireless network adapter that supports monitor mode to intercept these packets and turn them into actual images. Once you have Wireshark set up, then we can begin. So to start out with this tutorial on Wireshark, I want to give you an indication of what you should get at the very end. And in this case, we're going to take a look at the HTTP traffic that's flowing on the network. And when I press start, and I'll click continue without saving, then we should be able to start seeing some information that's flowing between various hosts on this network. Now, here you can see that Wireshark has also detected that there is a .jpg involved, which means it's likely that we're intercepting images, which is our intention in this case. So how is this happening and how is it possible? Well, a lot of different webcams use insecure HTTP uh, servers in order to show people what's going on. And most people will just use the default uh, HTTP server that's included on the camera in order to watch what's going on and maybe just have that on a screen somewhere in the building. Now, this opens up the possibility of intercepting the insecure HTTP traffic. So what we'll be doing in this uh, example is intercepting the HTTP traffic from a different host, listening to it, and then actually extracting an image so that we can try to see what they're seeing on their screen. Now you can see that the traffic that I'm intercepting is relatively organized. And if I click here, we can see all the most recent packets that are being intercepted. But if I were to delete this filter, I'll click one of these just so we don't get too far in the weeds. There we go. There's actually going to be a lot of other filters, uh, a lot of other packets to be displayed because we were only selecting one in a very, very large group of available packets that were being passed. Now you can see that some of these aren't being decrypted and that's another important thing that I'll get to a little bit later about what we will need in order to have the circumstance where we can kind of look into the packets and see what's being sent provided the person is using HTTP, uh, HTTP instead of HTTPS. So now we have a pretty good amount of packets, so I'm going to press stop. And let's look at one of these and see if we can find some identifying things we can use to create a filter and find other packets like it. Now, obviously, I've selected the hypertext transfer protocol, so I want to find um, get uh, HTTP requests. I can also use the host, so it's going to port 81, which is a very common uh, port for webcams to host a HTTP uh, server on to let people kind of check out what's going on on the camera or change the configuration options. So in this case, I can right mouse click on this host we want to surveil and then click on apply as filter and then select it. 
So if we want to see then what this looks like, we can start up our Wireshark again and we will start a fresh capture and be able to see all the traffic coming from this host, which is pretty, let's see. Let's get started, continue without saving. And there we go. So we can see there's a bunch of HTTP traffic and we're not specifying, uh, actually no, we are specifying that we wanna find uh, traffic uh, that's HTTP and then the host equals 192.168.0.31. So great, we've identified a target that we want to monitor. And in this case, we've kind of sniffed out some traffic from the overall network traffic that was more interesting to us and then created a filter so that we're just watching things that are coming from packets in this case that are coming from this particular host. Now, we're also getting more information, and the reason we've done that is because we were able to grab a handshake earlier on in the session. Now that's important because each one of these sessions is negotiated at the beginning of when the client connects to the Wi-Fi network. So if we weren't there to sniff this out in, uh, in the beginning, then we won't be able to decrypt the traffic for this particular session. Although it's pretty easy for us to just go ahead and disconnect the person with another command and ensure that we capture this traffic. Now, let's say that we didn't meet the first demand where we need to be able to kick somebody off this network and grab a handshake. Well, the way to do that is we can jump into a terminal window and I can just use a simple MDK3 W uh, LAN 0 mon, which is our uh, wireless network adapter that we're currently listing on, and then D for deauthenticate. So it's only going to take a quick second of this until we see something appear in Wireshark. And in general, that means that we're seeing deauthentication packets. So I'll go ahead and stop. and. We've seen a complete succession of anything coming from our host. So I will copy this filter and then I'm going to exit it. And let's take a look at what was going on at the network at large as soon as we started attacking things with uh, MDK3. So here we can see things are kind of back to, to usual on the network, but earlier we had these, this wave of packets attacking the network that was forcing everybody who was connected to automatically reconnect. So these packets that you can see here, the orange ones and yellow ones, are basically attempts to disconnect everybody who's connected. And following it, you should start to see people attempting to reconnect, and that's where we'll be able to grab the handshake that we are looking for in order to make sure we can decrypt everything that follows. Now, this is great for us because we can start to see the plain HTTP traffic, but if we don't actually have the password, then we still won't be able to see everything that's going on. So here we can see uh, we've disconnected people, and then people who have been connected to the network before have been forced after this wave of deauthentication. Here we go to submit their keys. So this is the handshake, and this is great because now we're able to see all the communication between the host and the router. So, all right, great. What we've done now is we've been able to identify HTTP traffic on the network. Uh, and to do that, we first had to kick the host off for a brief second so that we could be able to capture the, the basic initial keys for this session. And of course, this is assuming that we know the password. So how do we enter this? Well, that's a great question. Wireshark allows you to actually decrypt a number of protocols. And if you have credentials or uh, keys for them, you can go ahead and enter them in, in the settings under preferences. So here, you can see a list on the side of all the various protocols that Wireshark can decrypt. And in our case, we will go here and type I to, oops, I, and then select IEEE 802.11. So you need to click Enable Decryption, and then when I click Edit, um, we can go ahead and see the keys that we've inputted here. And in this case, we have the password for the network, uh, we have the name of the network, and there's a colon separating them. So that's it. First, the password, then the network. And on this side, you have the ability to input either the password or the PSK, which is computed from the password and some other information, or the WEP key, if that's the kind of traffic that you're intercepting. Now, what this does is give Wireshark the tools to decrypt traffic as it intercepts it. So that means that we're actually able to see all the traffic on this network, even though we're not actually a part of it. So you might see um, some examples where you know we're on the same network as the target, but in this case, we're actually just sniffing packets and decrypting them because we have added the keys to Wireshark and we've also been able to kick the person off the network for a minute and be able to get it the handshake as soon as they connect back. 
So great, we have these two things and now we can actually start to intercept this traffic. So that's really, really cool. But what can we actually do in terms of use it? Um, this doesn't exactly look like an image. So if I apply this filter, and we start intercepting only the things that we wanna see from the host we're monitoring. In this case, it's going to be the person who is watching the feed for the webcam. Then what exactly can we do to reconstruct it and see what they're seeing? Well, let's take a look at these packets. So far we've intercepted well over, well over a thousand. And let's go to the most recent one and see if we can reconstruct it into an image. All right, so let's grab this one right here. So I'm gonna stop the capture, and here we can see, we can decode as various things, but instead I'm gonna select this one and click on File, Export Objects, and then HTTP, because that's the protocol we're working with. So here, whoa, we can see that all these objects have been identified as the content type image slash JPG. So suddenly we have all these available images that we've actually intercepted within these packets that we can decode the data and reconstruct it into an image that we can see. So let's wait for a second for it to identify all these, and then we're gonna select the one we have selected here. And let's go ahead and save this so we can take a look at what it looks like. So we're gonna name this nullbyte.jpg and we're gonna save it to the desktop. So finally, what we're gonna do is go to our files. There we go. And in our files, we're gonna go ahead and look for the one on the desktop that we just saved that matches what we just downloaded from Wireshark. Now here on the desktop, you can see the file that we exported, nullbyte.jpg, and let's go ahead and open it and see what we can find inside. There we go. We have a still from a webcam, which we've intercepted from a computer that is not actually connected to this wireless network. Now to do that, we had to first intercept a wireless handshake by kicking the person off the network for a moment, and then we had to put in the password so that Wireshark would have everything it needed to decode the information and see the plain text HTTP that was going over the network. Once we had that, we could simply take the packet and export it, and then we had this very nice uh, image of what was being displayed on the person's screen, wherever they are, watching the webcam feed. And again, this will not work if somebody's not accessing the insecure HTTP web server running on the camera. So if you're having some trouble with this, a couple of things might be wrong, and you might notice that the WLAN 0mon is the, uh, is the wireless network interface that I'm using to intercept on. So if you're having some trouble with this, then my first kind of troubleshooting tip is to make sure that your card is in wireless monitor mode. And you can type ifconfig to see the list of different devices. And here you can see this card is WLAN 0 mon, but if yours just says WLAN 0, or if you've just plugged it in and you need to put it into monitor mode, um, you can type airmon ng, start WLAN zero. And of course I have already done so, so it's gonna say that it doesn't exist, but just a quick showing you how it works. If I were to type stop, it would go back to, see, we can see it's now uh, station, monitor mode has been disabled and station mode has been enabled. So I can type ifconfig and we're back to WLAN zero. So now if I type airmon ng, start WLAN zero. I can go ahead and put that into monitor mode. And further, if I identify the channel that I wanna listen on, I can type sudo air, well, I'm already root, so airmon, oh, uh, sorry, arrow dump ng WLAN zero mon. And now I have a list of all the different networks uh, in the area, including what channel they're on, so I can go ahead and put my card into whatever channel I need to monitor so that Wireshark can 
kind of intercept all the packets on that channel and not mess around with a bunch of other things that might make it just too complicated or even uh, miss a lot of packets that we're looking for. So let's say I wanna go after this one right here. This is our test network. So if I wanna specifically look at this, I can see it's on channel 11 and I can use that as basically the way that we filter the traffic down and set up Wireshark before opening it. So once our card is in wireless monitor mode, I can type airmon ng start wlan zero mon and then the channel I wanna set it to 11. And just like that, we should be able to open up Wireshark and start intercepting traffic from different devices that are operating on uh, the 11th channel. Um, so once we're back in Wireshark, we can start it up. It'll be sniffing on channel 11 and provided we have intercepted a handshake and we've also entered the credentials, we should be able to see everything and intercept just about anything going on in HTTP. If you own a Wi-Fi security camera, this is a perfect example of why it's important to keep your Wi-Fi network secure. Don't give out your password if you don't need to, and make sure to select a password that's pretty difficult because otherwise it's relatively easy for anybody with access to that password to see everything going over your network. You can also take steps to buy a camera that supports HTTPS instead of HTTP, which will also protect you from these sorts of attacks. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts or feedback on the show, send me a message on Twitter because we'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.